uh, the target width, sorry, and the distance between targets. Now, now that I have answered why, why I want to study this, I will answer how we did study. So we first ran a user study with virtual targets where we compare two types of movements. The first movement, and I'm going also to show it, it's on the screen, but it's called a view movement where the targets are in front of the user and the user needs to move their hand back and forth from their face doing the movement I'm doing right now. The comparison movement is a lateral movement where the targets are right and left from the user face and the participant needed to do a lateral movement, which is the one I'm doing. Because this is a physical study, we also consider the target size and the distance between targets, and we collected traditional physical data, like movement time, speed, accuracy, error rate, and movement patch. We, when setting our experiment, we try to consider and be really precise on like remove all other depth cues and try to remove other confounds that we can find. That's why like we sat our participants 75 centimeters away from the screen, so they didn't feel that they were going to hit, hit the, spill, the screen with their arm movement. We also rendered the targets between 40 and 75 centimeters from their faces, so users were able to correctly merge and also to don't overreach. Other consideration was that this, our participants sat on fixed chair, so they were not able to move and change their position from the targets. And we consider for motion parallax using head tracking. The only value that we thought specifically set for each participant was the IDP because we wanted to test for real world conditions. Now, when considering what, how the users did the study, we have a pool of the nine IDs that we get and our system randomly selected one ID which participant had to do the uh, pointing movement. Once participants uh, finish that movement, it's another randomly selected ID that the system display. Once the participant did all the view movements, then the system changed to the lateral movement. And participants did three rounds of this type of study. Now, our results, I will only explain the more important results. First, talking about target performance, as you can see on both of the plots, when consider movement time and throughput, our participants had a worse performance doing view movements than lateral movements. But because we know this is not the only way to consider this and to understand what's happening when the people are pointing, we also did the movement paths analysis. And here we found something really interesting. For lateral movements, our participants follow a traditional, let's call it, a movement path for pointing where they have a ballistic phase and a correction phase. However, when considering the view movements, our participants have a new, let's say, it, a movement path where they do like two ballistic phases. And we precise like participants were actually underestimating the depth of the target. We think that these two uh, results were part of the stereo display deficiencies, but to further verify that our practices were real, we did a second user study where we tried to compare the same movements in the same setting, but this time with physical targeting. So no stereo displays involved. And this experiment was the, as same as possible as we call replicate the virtual environment experiment, but with two different conditions. First, we only have one separation between targets because when we built the physical machine, it was too difficult to change between target distances. So we only choose the largest. And we choose the largest because that's where, according to our hypothesis, this uh, effect of the target depth change is more noticeable. The second uh, consideration is that we could not use uh, full spheres in our experiment because as this is a physical experiment, participants were actually hitting the sphere and they were relying on the haptics feedback instead of the visual feedback. So to control over that, we use what's called a half circle sphere where participants only were able to see the shape of the circle. And to tell them that they were actually inside the circle, we use a, light, a LED light so when they go inside, the LED light will turn on and off and you can see the LED lights on the videos. Now, when talking about the results of this experiment, again, performance and movement time and throughput, we can see the opposite results as the virtual targeting, where the lateral movements were worse than the depth movements. We again analyzed the movement paths, and here we found a traditional pointing movement path, where both the lateral and the view direction movements have a ballistic and then a correction phases. Now, one thing we do acknowledge is that this experiment is not a comprehensive review of physical 3D pointing target, 3D pointing. However, we believe that it's enough to compare it to virtual targeting, which is the final goal of our study. And we did precisely that. We compared our physical and our virtual results. Because our physical results have more, like, less tries, 
we remove all the virtual results of the extra target separations, and we only compare the 30 centimeters condition in both experiments. And here, as you can see, our, our results are flipped. And also, two confounds that may be possible are, first, that in our uh, physical study, the participants did a less tries. And second, that the participants only saw the half circle and not the full circle. However, even considering that, the physical study results are better performance, both in time and throughput, and you can see that in the plots. Now, we also did the linear fit of the target depth change on movement time, which is the final plot, and you can see that we have two different uh, plots. The first plot, which is the physical, the bottom one, shows that there's not a change depth between zero, which is not change, and 30, which is a lot of change. It looks a little bit down the, downwards trend, but it's not statistically significant. However, when we compare the virtual uh, fit of the line, there is a step fit, and with only considering the zero and the 30, there is a statistical significance between both results. So, this makes us consider that our two hypotheses were supported, and you can see them here. So, our hypothesis first is that stereo displays with a, ch a change between targets affect 3D pointing performance negatively, and that was supported. Our second hypothesis was that the deficiencies of stereo display systems make it harder to select virtual targets at different visual depths than real world targets, and that was also supported. And based on that, we proposed a new FISLA for 3D target, 3D pointing in stereo displays. So uh, the one you are seeing on the screen right now is a traditional FISLA. And what we did was add a linear target that considered the change in target depth. Now, a couple of considerations is why is a linear target and not other type of value? Because we are basing our model in the equity between the difference between depth equity and lateral equity, which is a linear change in our eyes. We're also basing the linearity of our model in the fits of the first study, which has an error square of 96. And finally, we're basing our model in previous uh, literature from eye research. Now, to verify that this model is actually uh, can be model other types of uh, movements besides the one that we studied in study one, we did a final third experiment. Again, with virtual targets, the same process and the same conditions that we did in study one. The only difference is that this time we have a more comprehensive uh, type of uh, movements and targets depth changes. And to achieve that, we, com we create a circle with 11 targets, and we put the targets on the user view. Now, the, I will explain a little bit of this experiment because it's a little bit more complicated, but for the circle targets, we select pairs of opposite targets uh, directions, and then we put them, put them in a pool of targets. So uh, at the beginning of each try, we just randomly selected one of the, the target pairs, and then we allow users to do the movement direction. So they did, again, the same movement depending on different movement direction. Once they selected 11 times the targets, we select another randomly part from the pool, and the participants did another movement direction. This means that participants did not follow the traditional ISO circle of Fitch law, but we work on targets pair. And we did that to consider the effect of learning and the effect of getting use of the movement. On the second plot, you can see the uh, target depth changes. How even if we only have three target separation, we have more differences between target depths. We have uh, we have even more, so we have to uh, pair them in different, uh, make them equalize them because it was too many target differences. And yeah, we again collected the movement time, error rate, throughput, speed, and movement paths. But I will only talk right now about the results of the performance. And there should be there, okay. So when considering movement time and throughput, the targets with the smaller changes of depth between the targets have better performance than the targets with bigger performance in depth. For movement time, both the 3 and 7.5 conditions have a better performance than all the other targets' depth changes. But for throughput, you can see the statistical significant difference on the plot. Now, one thing to consider is that this effect is smaller than in our study first. And we hypothesize is that because the differences between the target step is smaller. When analyzing our uh, results of the FITLA model, we compare it with four different previous proposed models. 
Two are two deep models, which is the standard Fitts law and the shannon wolford formulation, which add another logarithmic term at the, to the traditional Fitts law. And we compare it with two 3D Fitts law models, which is the Murati base and the Chan Myung. And our model has both a better fit and R squared and AC score, which allow us to compare models. Now, in conclusion, we identified that stereo display deficiencies negatively affect virtual hand pointing, especially for movements in depth. We also show that a target change depth can be linearly modeled in a new fit law. And when we analyzed the movement paths, we, anal we found that our participants did two different movement types. For lateral movements, they did a metronomical movement, which is basically doing back and forward, which I thought was like faster and they sometimes overreached, they were more accurate. But on the view uh, movements, they did a more, uh, or they tried to do a more precise movement, but they underestimated the depth of the targets and then they have to do a second movement. And even if they tried to be more precise, they were less accurate. We also propose recommendations for 3D user interfaces in stereo displays, and you can see them on the screen, but to summarize them, the best setting for a virtual objects in stereo displays is to have a quasi-planar arrangement in front of the user between 50 and 70 centimeters away and to be positioning on the dominant hand of the user. Because even if I don't, didn't mention this for the sake of time, we did find a difference between uh, the target where the user had the dominant hand and where they don't. But we, in the paper, we discussed this as part of the biomechanical effect of having targets in the right and left position. And that is all. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. To finalize, and if you are questioning if these results can be extended to other stereo displays, like headsets and augmented reality headsets, you can check the paper that we published at IEEE VR. Thank you. Cool. So do we have any questions? Maybe I ask the two. Okay. So first, I really like the idea of compar comparing the target selection with the virtual environment and the physical environment. And uh, if you see the study one, uh, how the users uh, confirm their selections? Because I, I noticed that there is no dwell, no uh, button price. So they just move back and forth? Yes. Uh, our experiment, we run it, and I think I have it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just going to this. to the videos. So our participants use a wand, and we have a button inside the wand. So once the participants got inside the target, and we show that they were inside by changing the color of the target, they click a button in the wand. Okay. So yeah, you are seeing how that worked in there. That makes sense, right. And uh, the other question is about the physical target selection. Because you have these uh, depths, two targets on, in different depths. And, uh, did you notice that the users actually move straight forward or they actually do this way? Oh, that's actually a really good question. And because we wanted to do a similar of the results, and here I am also showing that, we specifically tell participants to do like straight movement, and that's why the first target disappeared, to avoid exactly this like reaching movement. And because we analyzed the movement that parts, we were able to see that the participants actually did the depth okay. movement. Okay, cool. So. Yeah, uh, we do have time for one more question. I don't know. So uh, let's thank our speaker and uh, let's move to the next.